own Trisha. This past season, we introduced you to men who believed it was their right to control and abuse the women who they claimed they loved. Can she answer the telephone? No. Can I'll she put... answer the door if anyone comes no. to the door? No dresses, no nails, no weave, no makeup. Or I take a rag and wipe it off her damn face myself. Has um, he ever hit you? Um, yes, um, he kicked me in my face a couple of times. So I gotta have rules and structure to keep her in line. There was JB. She's got King JB's tattooed above her. I do things that you can't do. Not even you, Trish. Uh, ooh. There was Chris. You can't go nowhere. You can't see your mama. You can't talk on the phone. You can't do nothing. What? If I tell you what to do, if you don't do it, then that's your We also heard from Diego. I got rules that she damn sure got to follow. She got to cook, clean, iron and wash my clothes, and she going to do it every damn day until I'm satisfied. And when she disobeys me, I yell and slap the hell out of her. Would you slap her in yeah. the mouth in front yeah. of the children? Yeah. Today, a look back at our most outrageous controlling men. He cooked a dinner he didn't like. He threw it on the floor. He said, you know what? You get on your hands and you you eat it. How do you discipline her? Either I'm touching my face or I slap it. Here. Here. Oh, you better right, sit your right, right. in my face. Do you believe in God? You look natty. <laughs> It's all today on Trisha. Welcome, welcome to the show. Okay, the man sitting on the stage is named John, but he demands to be called King JB. Now, King JB claims women are beneath men and were put on this earth to serve them. Now, our king has a queen, his wife Chrissy, and they are also raising three kids together. King JB says if Chrissy doesn't obey all his rules, she will be disciplined. <laughs> so, why King JB? How come you call yourself King JB? I mean, because I paid cost to be the boss. I mean, it's not just about, it's not just about that. I mean, it's, it's what other people call me. It's, what, it's a rank. It's what I've earned you know, for the last 15 years, and I think it's, it's, it's just a title I've earned. Okay, so tell me about your belief in women not being equal to men. Well, here's the thing. I know, I know a, a lot of the women out there, they think they're equal, mm -hmm. but when you want the heavy couch move or you hear something creeping in the night, who do you come to? You come to me and say, hey, go check that out. You know, so, I mean, there's some equality, but at the end of the day, I do things that you can't do. You don't do things that I can't do, not even you, Trish. <laughs> <laughs> about sex when you say so I mean I don't really care about that when it comes to sex you know that's how that, I mean that's something I withhold from her if she doesn't act right oh. Oh. I mean cuz that's just the way it's got to be any other punishments I mean that's the main punishment cuz I know that she demands intimacy that's what she wants that's yeah. her main thing yeah. and with me I value myself I value my my penis so to speak so the bottom <laughs> line is I look at it like this you don't act right I'm not gonna give you what you want you're gonna sleep alone cry about that deal with uh, it. Uh, ooh. And, and how long, how long might you withhold uh, sex? A day or two? Yeah, I mean, as long as needed to get her back to acting right. Weeks? Like I mean, if that's, I'll hold with her for months. I, I want to ask you, I want to ask you about this tattoo that Chrissy has. Right. Tell me about this tattoo. I mean, she's got King JB's ass tattooed above her <laughs> with, a, with an arrow pointing down. And this ain't something I'm, I mean, listen, I don't make anybody do what they do not want to do. Mm -hmm. I just convince you to want what I want. She must cook, clean, um, what else? I mean, she's, she's got to check in. she got to show respect. Show respect. I mean, here's the thing. Can I she answer the door if anyone comes no, to the door? No, no, because here's the thing. It's my job to protect my household. Right. So, I mean, that, that person at that door could be a rapist, could be a serial killer. Could That's be my, the mailman. Could be. <laughs> but it also could, it could be something bad. It's uh, my job to protect. OK. Can she answer the telephone when it rings? No, it's my job. It's my job to handle the business. I mean, she listen, her friends, her family, here's the thing. They're going to call. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Do you approve of her friends? Not all. And I need, to, I need to approve for they call the phone that I pay for or knock at the door that I pay for, period. So there is no going out. There is no hanging out. There is no karaoke's. You going karaoke? <laughs> Turn on the Xbox. I bought you a game. Sit down and play. OK. Now, so she does all this for you. What do you do for her? I take care of her. When, you know, 
look at her before me and after me. She's you, a, a better yeah, woman? Yeah, a without, better parent? without a shadow of a doubt, she's a better parent. I mean, before me and after me. There's a, there's a structure, there's a guidance, there's a routine that she follows, that she must follow Hang on, a routine. to progress. So is this hour by hour, you kind of have a timetable? Man, I got, I got a whole list from 6 a.m. to 5 a.m. the next day. You don't sound like you trust women, how come? Well, because everything about them, they're walking lies from your head. Listen, I'm gonna explain that. All right, you, you wear that makeup. Your face don't really look like that. You wear, you, you wear t little bras that push your up. They don't look like that. You, you got high heels, you know what I'm saying? You're not that tall, you know what I'm saying? The point of, you got hair weaves. You don't have that hair. Okay, now that includes his wife, Chrissy. Before we meet her, let's see what she has to say. You know, the way I feel about JB's controlling ways is, you know, so I think they're positive and negative. It's positive for me in some aspects because I am structured, I have a routine I go by, and it's helpful and, it, and it's efficient as far as getting things done. What I don't like about JB's controlling ways is when he's name calling, when he's calling me bitch, retard, stupid, um, especially the ones where he's, he's insulting my intelligence. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I feel like I try my best to do what it is he wants me to do, and sometimes I just feel like it's not good enough. The tattoo on my back is a tattoo that says King JB's ass. It was done right after we were married. But when I saw that arrow, and the way that it, the arrow was shaped like, like a penis, you know, like, it, I, I, I hate it. I don't want to feel like a possession. I want to feel like, like his partner in life. I believe that he will listen to, to some of the things Trisha may have to say. And um, I do believe he's smart enough to take in the information to change. Please welcome Chrissy to the show. Ask, we saw a picture of your wedding. What were you dressed as? We were dressed as king and queen. Yeah. Um, it was it was actually amazing. It was a beautiful wedding. It was a lot of fun. Is he your uh, king? He is my king in a lot of ways. He is. Yeah. Yeah. In a lot of ways, I believe he is a king. He's very positive and influential in the way that he structures things as far as the way our daily mm -hmm. date routine. It's not bad. But the kid. There's a but. But. Um, you can tell him this. I'm not going to take being called. Stupid. I'm not gonna take being called a retard. I'm not gonna be take called being called a bitch anymore. Cause you know why? I'm not. If I'm your queen, I am none of those things. I am intelligent, I am smart, and I am your partner. And we can do this together. It's about me helping you. JB, you call her names? Yeah. Sometimes when I, I mean, yeah, why? we have problem. All right, here's the thing. I mean, if you if you act retarded. You're gonna get caught with retarded. If you acting like a bitch, you're gonna get called a bitch. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. I don't like well, that term retarded. Uh, I, I don't you. like no. that term retarded. But here's the no, thing. Sometimes either. people earn certain titles, and no, that's just what no, it is. Wait, no, hold, what on, saying, hold on. Well, hold on. Hold on. Now. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Now don't it's do like. What? Don't do what? I mean, don't interrupt me. The king is talking. You know, it's time to sit back and get biblical with this. Now, when it comes down to you this. You believe in God. <laughs> You look natty. Ooh. <laughs> okay, what about, what about the influence on your son? Some of the things that I don't agree with is like, you know, women should be cooking and cleaning and that kind of thing. What JB says that to the children. Right, like what, what a woman's role is. He tries to explain what a woman's role is. I know your little boy, we're talking about the, the next generation, your son looks up to you like a god, literally like a god. Literally. Last, last night, our executive producer sat down for a revealing, somewhat shocking interview. Have a look at this. What does King JB teach you about women? Uh, he teaches me more of the role and what their role is supposed to be. I agree with the role that they should be at home, cooking dinner and cleaning. What if your mom wanted to go get a job and get a career and do something for herself? If they want to get a job, if they want to get a job online or something, as long as they stay home and still do their job at home, that's okay. Do you yeah. believe in God? No. You told our producer, JB is God. Yeah. What do you mean by that? The, the self-proclaimed God, the creator, 
so that he would give us shelter and food. He hasn't done that. There's still a lot of homeless people and starving people. He gives me shelter and food. Therefore, he is God. You think that the women in America should be more like the women in Saudi Arabia? Yes. They shouldn't, shouldn't be as yelling and loud. They shouldn't be running around prostituting themselves. But why, why do you pick Saudi Arabia? What, why are the Because in particular in that country, that's how it is. You, the women are loving, they clean the house, they, they get executed for hoeing, and that's, that's good moral. Uh, you were actually applauding? Absolutely. Absolutely. So why don't you go live in Saudi Arabia? Because I look, okay, okay. Here's the answer to that. All right, it does not, this does not mean that I do not respect a few women. Listen. They do, they do in the Middle East. I have lived in the Middle East. They respect women, right. albeit in a different way. What I'm saying is, why don't you go and live in an Islamic country? Because obviously, obviously things are better here. Why would I go do that? I mean, the truth. How do you know things are better? They have more money, they have oil. Because I'm not an idiot, I do read. And then, I mean, the truth <laughs> of it is, the bottom line of it is, that, come on, well, I'm in America, I'm not leaving. And so the point of it is, what he is saying, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with this, is that, is that the values are different. Women understand, walk on the other side, cover your face up, quit putting your ass all out there like that. You know what I'm saying? And you feel good hearing your son talk like that? Well, no, of course not. Has he brainwashed so you? No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, not at all, not at all. No. I am not brainwashed whatsoever. Who was the first man who made you follow orders? My father. Ah. So this isn't an abusive a relationship. No, I mean, he's this, not physically no, abusive. No, he's not abusive. This no. is a codependent relationship. That, that explains a lot. We'll be right back after this. Up next, you cooked a dinner he didn't like. He threw it on the floor. He said, you know what? You get on your hands and knees and you eat it. Has um, he ever hit you? Um, yes, um, he kicked me in my face a couple of times. <laughs> Coming up, Robbie's abuser is here and he has no remorse. <laughs> and later. I want you to hit me. Hit me if you back. What? 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 A gruesome, controlling man. I punch in your mouth. Today on Trisha. Okay, please welcome Robbie. Now, Robbie has been dating this man, Chris, for four years, and they have a four year old daughter together. Robbie has come here today because she is being mentally and physically tortured by Chris. Now, one time, Chris didn't like the dinner Robbie cooked for him. So much so, he threw it on the floor, he spit in it, and made her get on her hands and knees and eat it. Yeah. So what kind of man acts like this? Well, take a look at this tape. My name is Chris, and when my girlfriend Robbie doesn't do what I say, she gets disciplined. My definition of discipline is cooking, cleaning, sex when I want it, wash my clothes, make sure my daughter clean, everything I think a woman should do for a man. I call Robbie a fat bitch, a bald head bitch, a stinking bitch, a hoe, a whore. I call her whatever I feel like that's what she is at that time. I call Robbie fat because all she wants to do is sit on the couch all day, eat snacks and watch TV. She don't like to run, walk, jog, nothing. I like Robbie to dress with dresses down to her ankles. I don't want her to show no cleavage, not wearing no short shorts or ass to hang out, none of that, because I'm not going for it. I like Robbie to call me daddy, big daddy, and sweet <laughs> Willie. If more men discipline their women, they wouldn't be so damn disrespectful. I was just mentioning that, that one time you cooked a dinner he didn't like. He threw the lasagna on the floor, he spit in it. Mm -hmm. He threw it on the floor, he said, you know what, you get on your hands and knees and you eat it. And I'm like, are you serious? And I'm, I'm, I couldn't believe it at first. And I, I just got on the floor and I ate it. Has he ever been physically abusive to you? Has um, he ever hit you? Um, yes. Um, well, we all was kicking it with our friends one day, and his friend actually, you know, we was having a conversation, and he told me a joke, or whatever, and I laughed. 
he got mad and he said, oh, you want, you want my friend? You want my friend? All right, I'm gonna make you want him. And he, he started beating me and he kicked me in my face a couple of times. What are the rules? I'm cook clean for my daughter. When he gets up, make sure he's, he's, he's fed, his clothes is ironed, clothes washed. Can I ask what happens if you don't follow the rules? Um, he is, he goes off with me. Sex, he demands sex, mm -hmm. when and where and... Three, four times a day. If I, if I say no, whenever he wants it. It can be, I can be washing the dishes. If, I, if I'm washing the dishes, he won't, he wants that. If he wants some sex, we got, I gotta stop doing the dishes and go do what he wanna do. How are you feeling inside? I don't even feel like I'm a person. I can somebody want me to do something like that. I, I feel like I'm his dog. You're scared of him? Mm -hmm. JB, it sounds like her man is doing a better job of controlling her than even you could. So you must be looking uh, up. This is the new king. <laughs> He's in the is that what, no, I ain't like that. I'm not about abuse like that. You I do don't agree with him. I slip up and I talk crazy like everybody else, but we talking about, look, this is the woman I do sleep with. I kiss this woman. I don't want her, her mouth on the floor. Robbie, what do you want to say? What do you wish that Chris would hear? I wish he could treat me like the woman that I am. And I'm, I'm kind of his, I had his child, and he should be having way more respect for me than he does. Now, you look at your sister Tasha. Mm -hmm. How does she feel about him? Oh, she don't like him. She tells me every day, Robbie, you can do better than this. You are pretty. You can do way better than that. You don't need no man to do like that. We... OK, when we come back, we will meet Chris and we'll also talk to Robbie's sister, Tasha, who has come here to put an end to this abuse. We'll be right back. Up next, Robbie's abuser is here and he has no remorse. And later. I want you to hit me. Hit me if you bet. Oh, Lord, I wish you would. I wish you would. Right, right. My face. I'm here desperate to put an end to her boyfriend Chris's controlling, abusive ways. Uh, we've heard how he's made her eat food off the floor, food she prepared because he didn't agree with the way she prepared with it. He's put his hands on you. He has rules of what you can and can't do. So there are always two sides to every story. So let's meet Chris. Come on out, Chris. <laughs> Come sit here. You said what? Um, I'd like to talk to you. What are the mm -hmm. rules? What are the rules that you have for Robbie? The rules I have for Robbie is you can't go nowhere. You can't see your mama. You can't talk on the phone. You can't do nothing. What? If I tell you what to do, if you don't do it, then that's your ass. What? Period. If you want sex, she's going to drop whatever she does. Yeah, if I want it right then and there, she got to stop whatever she's doing and give me what I want. What? She, how, how does she need to address you? She need to dress me a sweet willy, daddy or big daddy. What? Period. Who you here with? Uh, who are you talking to? Let me just go. Who, excuse me. Sorry, guys. Yes. Um, from my understanding, both of you have daughters, right? Yeah. And my concern was the first gentleman that said, he said he trains, raises his daughter to be submissive. And now I, I'm understanding that father protects his daughter, but here you are teaching your daughter to accept a man to treat your daughter like that. That seems really backwards to me. Because you're not, a protector yes, no, of your I think, child. I, I think you caught that the wrong Thank way. You. No, well, you said you. submissive. Well, let, me, let me clarify. Hold on. Yeah. Let me clarify. Yeah. Hold on. Let me clarify. Being submissive yeah. does not mean being abused. Being submissive. Yeah. All right. Look, look. I want her to let the man lead if he's qualified. But, but I'm not telling her, hey, you know what I'm saying? Let him yeah. run you. Can I just ask you, how would you feel if when your daughter grew up, she had a partner like Chris? I mean, he'd be a dead I'm a dead person. 
I mean, just, I mean, no offense to this man, but yeah, yeah, if he put his hands on my daughter, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm shooting at him. But maybe you are raising her in such a way that means she will end up with a man. <laughs> Um, why? Why treat her like that? Would she love you any less if you were respectful of her? I gotta lay down rules. If, if I ain't got no rules, I ain't got no structure, then she gonna be out of control. So I gotta have rules and structure to keep her in line. Now, does Tasha, this is Robbie's sister, Rob, uh, Robbie lives with Tasha, does Tasha follow those rules? What do you think of her? Tasha ain't got no men, so I don't know what Tasha do. Well, <laughs> Robbie's sister Tasha is here and she has a few things that she wants to get off her chest. Yeah, Tasha, come on out. Has he, ever, has, he, has he ever been physical with you, ever been violent towards you? He hasn't been violent towards me, but him and my sister got into altercation. They was fighting and I jumped in. And I mean, I'm tired of him putting his hands on my sister. I'm tired of hearing my sister cry. I'm tired of hearing her scream. And, my niece watching this stuff, so you know. Mm. I mean, is it, whose house is it? Mine. This is my house. But he's out working. No, not. Working. He's not working. I'm just doing what I so do. So who pays the bills? I pay the bills. So Tasha, you're saying that uh, your sister doesn't have that money, but Chris, you're saying you do have the money. You don't have to go to Robbie for money. This is what no, you're I saying. I don't got to go. I don't got to go. You, to you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Not you would, you, you, the truth is not in you. You would not take money off her. That's what you're saying. I want you to watch yourself on this screen. Now, last night, we had a hidden camera in your green room while you were in our offices. Now, apparently, you wanted Robbie to hand over the money we gave her for food. Check this out. Robbie, that really upset you, and I noticed that one stage Chris said, "Get over here," and kind of like my dog in the park. You, mo uh, you moved there. You're scared. That didn't bother you? You talking to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm going to be honest, man. You know, When you saw that piece of footage, that, yeah, I, man, I, I nah, saw your face. pissed me off, man. I'm going to tell you, if you really had a rain on your kingdom, you wouldn't have to do that, man. You'd be able to do this mentally. You wouldn't even have to put your hands on your girl. I'd do what I want. This, this is me, you feel me? That's your girl. I mean, yeah, I mean, so I mean, it's different strokes so different So stay folks. out of my business. You handle yours, man, I handle mine. Flat I ain't out. no chick, homeboy. I ain't no chick. OK, we know you both got something in your diapers, but uh... <laughs> Coming up, so Chanel doesn't follow the rules. How do you discipline her? Do I slap her? And later. I want you to hit me. Hit me if you're bad. Oh, what? I wish you would. I wish you would. Right, right. 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 My face. Get off my stage! Abusive, controlling men. I'm punching your mouth. Today on Trisha. Please welcome Diego. Now, Diego has been dating this 19-year-old named Chanel for the past year. In fact, they've known each other since they were kids. Now, despite their history, Diego feels that it is his right to control Chanel's every move. Diego demands that Chanel do his laundry, clean his shoes, give him massages, and have sex with him whenever he wants. <laughs> now, if Chanel steps out of line, Diego proudly admits to popping her in the mouth. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. I need to be in full control, even with my girlfriend, Chanel. I don't trust females, and I damn sure don't trust her. I got rules that she damn sure got to follow. She got to cook, clean, iron and wash my clothes, and she going to do it every damn day until I'm satisfied. The way she looks got to meet my approval. No dresses, no nails, no weave, no makeup, or I take a rag and wipe it off her damn face myself. When I want sex, I get it. And if I don't, I go get it from somewhere else. It's a known fact 
that when she disobeys me, I yell and slap the hell out of her. I prefer to slap her in the mouth, because nine times out of 10, that's what get her in trouble. Men are superior to women. A woman's role in life is to obey her man. Every woman should do exactly what they man want. That's pretty much all they good for. Well, we'll meet Chanel in a few moments, and we'll also meet Chanel's cousin, Tangela, who's here hoping to save her cousin. But first, Diego, so let's go through your rules. Um, what about Chanel going out with friends? No, she can't do that at all. No. I ain't having that, no. What is your fear would happen if she went out with girlfriends? Do you, is it something that you worry might go down? Yeah, yeah, I don't trust nobody. I, like I said, she got to be right in front of me where I can see her at all times. Now, what about um, her chores at, at home, you know, as soon as she, as you wake up? What, what do you expect her to do? Cook my breakfast mm -hmm. and make sure it's done right. Yeah. You understand? What happens Clean if it's not done right? I'm going to give it back to her. She's going to remake that. Now, what? what about cleaning? Chores around the house. Clean, wash the dishes, yeah. you know, mop the floors, clean the bathroom, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Clean, uh, vacuum, yeah. stuff like that. Oh, all of that. Now, yeah. now you, so you go to work? No. No. Does she go to work? Yeah. She goes to work? Yeah. Now, what about uh, sex? You say. I get it whenever I want it. Whenever I want What if she doesn't want to do it? it she gonna do it. If she don't, I'll go somewhere else and do it. Does she ever say to you, no, I don't want to do it? No, she don't. She don't. Okay. Are you wondering why they... Do you get why they're booing? It don't matter why they're booing. This ain't their problem. It's not but, their situation. But what is a man's role? What should these guys be... How should they be treating their women? Tell them what to do and get what they got to get done done yeah. you understand simple as that if they don't follow the rules if chanel doesn't follow the rules how do you discipline her either i'm touching my face or i slap out of her here. here so domestic violence if that's what you want to call it it don't what take what do you want to say sir what well, you put your hand up you kept putting your hand up stand up for me what do you want to say you sound real stupid yeah. oh, you sound stupid you know why I say you sound stupid? You're a black man, I'm a black man. You treat women bad, you make all black men look bad. No. No, you make yourself look bad. You understand? You make yourself look bad. No, I don't make myself look bad because I got a wife and six kids. She take care of me, I take care. That's what you do in a relationship. That's what you do. I ain't got nothing for you. That's what you do. You understand? Do you think men are superior to women? Yep. Why? because that's the way I was raised, you understand? What do you want, what kind of future do you want with Chanel? I want her to be my wife one day, you understand? Mm. You understand? But my wife got, my, my wife got to do everything I actually do, like I said, you feel me? Simple as that, yeah. period. If what? she don't, she can move on. But what happens when she has children, because she'll have to be concerned with those children first, won't she? And then you won't come first. What are you, how are you going to deal with she that? She's going to have to be cons considered with all of us, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. All of us come first, you feel So me? if she doesn't look at... She take care of them, she's going to take care of me. And if she doesn't do that, or she doesn't make their breakfast right, what will, what will you do? She's going to remake it. But would you, 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 would you slap her in yeah. the mouth in front yeah. of the children? Yeah. Yep. So, do you love her? Yeah, I love her. Do you... Do you own her? Yep. You yep. own her? Yep, she mine. She's yep. yours? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I want to take a... I want to take a break. I want to take a break because when we come back, we'll meet Chanel and we'll hear how she feels about Diego's rules and her controlling ways. So stay tuned. Coming up. I want you to hit me. Hit me if you can. Yeah. Boy, what you want? I want you to hit me. Hit me if you can. Boy, what you want? I want you to hit me. Hit me if you can. Boy, what you want? I want you to hit me. And later, backstage with the abusers. All the women in your family seem to have done good to you. Oh, my mom, sir. Do you think you're repaying women right the way you treat them? Today on Trisha. 
We've been talking to Diego, who says his 19-year-old girlfriend, Chanel, needs to obey all his rules and demands. If she doesn't, he admits he'll, what, smack her across the mouth? Exactly. How many times have you done that? It only take one time. It only take one time. You I slap her once, she's going to do what she got. So you're training her? If, if that's what you want to call it. What do you call it? What do you call it? I call it getting her in line, like I said. Getting her in line. Getting her in line. So we're about to meet Chanel. Uh, does she still have to obey your rules while she's here? She got to obey my rules wherever she at. Okay, so let's meet Chanel. <laughs> Hi, Chanel. Hi. Hi. So, how do you feel? How do you feel that a lot of the guys, she seems to be attracting a little bit of male attention? Does that make you feel nervous? Mm. No. Not at all. Not at all. Why not? She know her place. She yeah. know her place. So, exactly. Chanel, what is your place? His woman, I, that's... Who I want to marry. Has he ever been physical with you? Yes. Uh, what causes him to be physical with you? Me doing things he doesn't approve what, of. How is he physical with you? What, what would he do? Uh, smack me. Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? Uh, yeah, I have a problem with it. Why? What's the problem with it? You shouldn't treat a woman like that. You shouldn't hit a woman. Yeah. So, everyone's probably asking, why do you let him treat you like that? Because this is my love of my life. You know, everybody has... Everybody... Yeah, everybody has their different opinions and things, but when my family was gone, when they left me, it was him. Yeah. It was him. He supported... Uh, regardless of what anybody said, he supported me. Does he ever call you names? Yes. Like what? Like bitch. Ho. Why? That's just what it is. Like I said, that's, that's, that's my words, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. If I feel like she acting like a bitch, she's gonna be a bitch, you understand? Right. If I feel like acting like a hoe, she's gonna be a hoe, you understand? What, 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 what does she do that makes her be like a hoe? Running around with that phone, texting, going out with people, you know what I'm saying? Like does I she said, do that? Hiding what she do? No, because I won't let her. Oh, okay. So tell me about Tangela. What's your relationship with her? You close with her? Yes, that's like my sister. We're so close. I tell her everything. We talk to each other all the time. Mm. She's always been the person. Like, you can't let him do that. You can't be that. Have Isn't you that? met Tangela? Nope. Oh, this is going to be a first time? Yeah. Oh. Well, as you heard, Chanel's cousin Tangela, who has never met Diego, has been just waiting for the opportunity to confront him about his controlling ways. So, Tangela, come on out. I don't know who the hell you think you are trying to control my cousin. It's not gonna happen. I want you to hit me. Hit me if you bet. Boy, I wish you would. I wish you would. I wish you would. You better right, sit your right. ass down right. in my face. Pop me in my mouth. And you understand? Pop me I will. in my mouth. I, will pop I wish you would. I wish you would. Get this bitch I wish you would. I will. I'll punch you in your Mouth. Hey, hey, hey! No, just a minute, just a minute. If you had hit Tangela, I would have done... I would have done you a favor, out of care. I would have pressed charges. I know that. I know that. I know that. That's because you're on this show, you understand? You're right here. It wasn't right here, you couldn't press nothing. Man, why are you crying? What? Because what? my cousin, he's not doing it right. It don't matter. She deserved way better. Well, what happens when you tell her? You must tell her. Why? Do you tell her that? I have told her, like, you deserve way better. Like, you know, you don't need no like him. Yeah. He's a little kid. Yeah. So, she's beautiful. So, Chanel. But then, then she's gonna do the hell I tell her. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. Was Chanel always like this? How did she used to be when you knew her? Oh, she was very fun. We used to go out. We used to go to the movies. We used to hang out a lot. Like, she's a free spirited girl. Like, when she's with this little boy right here, yeah. she shuts down. Um, I'm just going to meet some audience guests. In our audience, we have Khalil and Yvonne. Can you stand up for me? <laughs> Khalil, uh, Yvonne, um, how do you feel about what you've been hearing, Khalil? I don't agree with everything, but I agree with parts of it. I guess what he's doing to her is a good thing. She likes it. How do you know she likes it? Because she's with him. And um, how... Do you have rules for Yvonne? Yeah, of course. What are the rules for Yvonne? Um, basically, she must wash my clothes, fold them, iron everything, even my boxers and my socks. So, Yvonne, are you happy... Are you happy with the way the relationship is? Majority, I would say no. On a scale of one to ten, one feeling in your heart, your, your general mood is one of sadness, of loneliness. Ten being, wow, this is as good as it gets. I'm in heaven. Where would you put yourself? I would say a six. Oh, that's pretty good. Sit down. You've got nothing to... Keep living your life. Really? Really? 
I'm asking you. I would say like a two. Oh. I want to come back to you about what you're hearing. Thank you very much. So does that, does that kind of verify where you're coming from? Pretty much, yeah. You get that. Where would you put yourself? Uh, seriously, in contentment with the relationship. Ten being it couldn't get any better than this. One being pretty low. I'm going to go with four, maybe. Because we got to meet. It's going to get better. That's not really that good, is it? It's good enough. We've got to take a break, but I have put something up here. Could, would you mind accompanying me back to the screen here? I just have something that I, I put up for, for you. Um, let's... OK, if you wouldn't mind standing over here. We like to control what we're frightened of. If you're scared, you will lose something. You try to hold it real tight. So tight, you just might choke the life out of it. Was there a time when you were just so frightened and so scared and you shout and there was no one, no one there? It'd been a lot of time. Yeah. When we're scared of something, we want to control it all. Is it working for you? Seriously? Is this control? It is working for you so far. Any interest in changing me, working with you, trying nope. it a different way? Nope. So if I do some work with you, it's, it's a waste of time. Is Pretty that what much. you're saying? Pretty much. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll see. But the danger is Chanel being here, she might wake up and smell a bit of coffee and then you're in trouble. We'll see. That's my gift for now. Up next, backstage with these controlling men. All the women in your family seem to have done good to you. Oh, my mom, sir. You gotta change. Yeah, for my daughter. You are the fuck! You're a fuck A group of controlling men. A punch in your mouth. Today on Trisha. Today, we've been looking back at our most outrageous stories about controlling men. Now, we just showed you a lot of the conflict, but in shows like these, I make sure that there is resolution. So I personally spend a lot of time with these men after the show. Take a look at some of the interventions that took place backstage. That's your little girl? Yeah, that's Egypt. We know through evidence that little girls mm -hmm. who come from homes where there is some violence done against the woman, uh, they tend to get into similar relationships themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. So you need to be prepared for this. There was a time in your life when you were small that you felt alone, unheard. What do you wish someone had said to you at that moment? I love you. Yeah. Life can get better. Your grandmother? Were you close to her? Yeah, I was real close to my grandma. Yeah. And your sister? Yeah, and my sister. We was real, real close. How do you think she would feel about the way you're being... She wouldn't them? approve of it. She wouldn't. And my your sister? My sister, she wouldn't approve of it either because my sister died like that. Her boyfriend shot her in the head with a gun. But all the women in your family seem to have done good to you. On oh, oh my mom, sir. Do you think you're repaying women right the way you treat Chanel? You gotta change. Yeah, for my daughter. I'm ready to change. For my daughter. Are you interested in changing? Okay. A group of controlling men. A punch in your mouth. Today on Trisha. Thank you for joining us today and if you know someone who is in an abusive relationship or you yourself are in need of help call the national domestic violence hotline the number is 1-800-799-SAFE that's 1-800-799-7233 thank you for watching